Last time we got ourselves in a bit of a pretty pickle. With a chance of getting out of it. I emphasis on chance in more ways than one. Hi, chance. How you doing? Are you going to try and kill me again? On one hand, pros and cons. We ally with chance. We get a chance to maybe get closer to her motives. What is she doing here exactly? What is her grander motivations? So I get in on the ground floor with that. Even though in universe we have no reason to be suspicious of her. Uh, in a meta sense, we absolutely do have reason to be suspicious of her. In universe, we don't. So realistically, this choice comes more down to. Uh, do we want to lie to the police in a potentially provable way, or do we not want to lie to the police? She's very obviously lying for our sake. Well, it would be interesting to accept that and find out why she's doing this. There's also the question of would not lying to the cops get us in more trouble because we can't actually prove where we were? Well, I asked you for your take on it. The survey says, tell the truth. A uh, solid margin, I'd say. So, now that you know what that was all about. Eh, don't know if I should lie any more than I already have. No, I was somewhere else, but I can't prove it. Somewhere else? Uh, yeah. You're not giving me much to work with, kid. Miss Jackson, are you certain that he was with you last Monday night? Chance blinks. She looks surprised. Oh no! I'm sorry, I thought you said Thursday. I'm not sure how anyone could make that mistake. Maybe she maybe she's backing out of it now? Or maybe that was a Maybe that was an honest mistake. <laughs> not sure how anyone could make that mistake. She looks at Detective Gursky with an apologetic smile and giggles. <laughs> I guess I didn't really think things through bursting in here like that. Now there's a surprise. <laughs> Jupiter's dry utterance is just loud enough for Chance to hear, but the barista cheerfully ignores her. I'm going to assume there's a history here I don't know about. I'm also going to assume I don't want to know about it. Detective, Ger Detective Gursky turns to Jupiter. I'd like to see the video you mentioned earlier. Of course. Follow me. Gursky points at me. You come with us. Oh, great. I what? I'm not letting you out of my sight, kid. Now get up and let's go. Right. I scramble to my feet and follow him out the door. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Chance slip away from, her, from the group. Looking for her boyfriend, I guess. Bye, Chance. Jupiter leads us down the hallway, around a few corners, and into a large room hidden in the back of the building. I kind of expected a huge jumble of beakers and test tubes filled with mysterious boiling liquids. But everything's a bit more ordered than that. This is a university lab, so of course there's going to be big lab tables and stuff. Many sinks. That is a lot of sinks. Lone laptop sits on one of the counters. Jupiter strides up to it and types in a password. Right here. David and I are the only ones with clearance to view the security footage, so none of the others have seen this. Screen lights up with the video that I found at hidden at Mr. Alton's place last week. There's not much to it, just someone who looks like me walking down the main hallway. At one point he glances briefly up at the camera and offers a small salute. Well, that's not very subtle. It's also not me. Then who is it? Your evil twin, an android? Liam Alton? Yeah, that's right, I, rem I remembered his name since part one. I don't know. Detective Gursky sighs and turns to Jupiter. Could you give us a moment? He grabs my arm and drags me to the corner of the room. Listen, kid, you're on really thin ice here. I thought... No, we all thought highly of you and your sister. But who's to say you haven't changed these last three years? You've disappeared without a trace, and two people have died since your return. The worst part is, all of these deaths tie back to your history, 
You don't think that's at least a little bit suspicious? But I didn't! Even if you didn't kill them, you're involved. Give me a good reason why I shouldn't just arrest you now. What are you arresting me for? Because he's with us. Hi, Aki. Aki places a firm hand on his shoulder and looks him directly in the eye. And you know what that means. I'm well aware of what it means. Are you? Oh. He releases his grip on me. What are you doing here, anyway? Aki holds up her phone. You texted me in order to come right away. She doesn't bother to hide the sarcasm in her voice. And when my handler says jump? I meant, why are you at the University of Edgewater? I wasn't informed that you were on assignment. And where are the others? With their tour guide, as they should be? We're here on official business. I called it in this morning. She folds her arms across her chest. Schultz gave us the green light. Schultz? Hang on, she's involved? Aki and Detective Gursky look at me, surprised. She's the one in charge of our little work program. Didn't I tell you? No, you never mentioned she was a part of this. Then how do you know her? She was in charge of a similar work program with me. Aki's eyes light up. Oh, Khan, you bad boy. I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, it's not. We volunteered for it. Unlike you, I didn't have to get arrested before I decided to work with the police. Aki shrugs. Our way was more fun. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, that's one word for it. Fun for you. Not me. D Detective Gursky rolls his eyes. Anyway, as delightful as this game of compare and contrast is, we do have more pressing matters. So maybe one of you two wants to fill me in? Aki coughs and shoots a meaningful glance over my shoulder. Jupiter is leaning against the wall staring at us. David and Nathan peer in through the doorway, trying hard not to look conspicuous. They're all staring at us. We're too far away for them to have heard our conversation, but they're definitely curious about what we're talking about. Outside, then. The tone of his voice says there's no room for argument. Lead the way, officer. De -de Detective Gursky gives me one last look before he and Aki exit the lab. David and Nathan scramble to get out of their way, stumbling into the lab like some sort of slapstick routine. Once they untangle from each other, they quickly take up posts on either side of Jupiter. Um, okay. So... Yeah. No response. Great! The room falls silent and I struggle for something to say. Or do. Or... I, I don't know. And behind this door is our Cave of Wonders! The main lab! Oh no. Aaron's voice echoes from the hallway, breaking through the silence. He swings the door open and sings a little fanfare. Ta-da! Oh, you two look like you're having fun. Naoki and Lee May stand behind Aaron. They look relieved to see me. Oh, hey, found my group. Uh-oh, looks like something bad happened. His finger hovers instinctively over his camera, ready to capture whatever bad moment might occur. He's the one who stole our research last Monday. No, he's not. He's my whole student. Jupiter points to her computer screen. Oh. Turns to me with a hurt expression on his face. Kangai, did you really steal from us? No! Roll my eyes. I know what it looks like, but it's not me. Then how do you explain it? Naoki raises his hand timidly. Uh, um... Who are you? Kisaki Suitani. My other whole student. Aaron casts him a sideways glance. You're not a thief, too, are you? Uh, hey, the jury's still out on me, you know. That's hardly the point. Um... What? If you have something to say, just speak up. Oh, okay. Now he approaches the computer and points at the person on the screen. It's just that I notice the hair is different. He doesn't have the black on the ends. The guy in the video has solid, dirty blonde hair, unlike mine. I still have the remains of when I dyed my hair black last year. Naoki had pointed it out the first time we watched it, but we just assumed the video was taken before I dyed my hair. This video was taken last week, that might actually count as evidence in my favor. Jupiter crosses her arms. And what if he dyed it after this video? 
But wouldn't he dye all of his hair in that case? Or get it cut? I suppose, but it's still a flimsy alibi. And that's currently all he's got going for him right now. Hey, it's better than nothing. I mean, it's enough of a difference to think it might be someone else, right? We'll see after the police sort it out. Where'd that police dude go, anyway? Jupiter sighs. Don't you two have somewhere to be? Like, office hours in the library? Oh. Right. Dios mio, do I have to remind you of everything? Try not to keep your student waiting too long. The two of them scurry out of the room and slam the door shut behind them. The room falls into an uncomfortable silence, punctuated only by the sound of footsteps echoing in the hallway. Before their footsteps fade, the bell in the center of campus begins to ring. And now they're late. Um... Something wrong? I'm not sure. Naoki frowns. He looks troubled. It's not the same. Hmm? What's not the same? Turns away from Jupiter and whispers to me. The bell sounds different than it did this morning. Perfect memory. That? I shrug. Sounds the same to me. It's probably nothing. His expression tightens. Come on, we know him, we know known him long enough for now that If you care that much, go check it out. Um I don't want to go by myself. He pops his head back and forth as if he's having trouble making a decision. Well I can't exactly go with you, given that I'm being uh detained. What's wrong? I was just wondering if there was something special about the bell that just rang. Not particularly. We can go look at it if you want. Are you sure? Uh-huh. Let's go. But what about Haru? Maybe we should wait for her. You go ahead. We'll let her know where you are when she gets back. Naki thinks about it a moment before nodding. Okay. Let's go. Careful, my dude. Aaron and Naoki leave, and the room again sells into yet another uncomfortable silence. Hi, Jupiter. So, uh, that seems to be the theme of the day. Now might be a, now might be a good time to try to convince Jupiter I'm innocent. What should I tell her? Let's start by apologizing. At least sorry about all the confusion. Is there anything I can do? No. Not really. But... Listen, there's a lot going on right now. Even if you're not the thief, the research has still been stolen. I'm still convinced that this is Liam Otten. That's the research he stole at the end of... in the stinger at the end of the game of Kansei. And since I'm the one who has to do damage control, I don't have time for anything else. Hey, did you miss me? Yeah, actually. Aki pokes her head into the room and flashes me a teasing grin. I'm not sure how to answer that. You could say yes. And where's the detective? Out. He said he had to call someone. Out. He said he had to call someone. Oh, sorry. I had to step away for it briefly, but... Aki tosses herself casually onto one of the stools and spins around. Where's my brother? Um, he went off to the clock tower with Aaron. Why? Her voice tenses up. I said the chiming sounded funny. He seemed really bothered by it, so I told him to go check it out. No big deal. It was probably nothing, but... Nothing? Oh no. Aki stands up so quickly that she knocks her stool over. Even Lee Mei looks a little worried. Khan, you don't understand. It's never nothing. She turns to Lee Mei. Are you getting anything? Lee Mei shakes her head apologetically. It is too far away. I cannot make anything out. Then we're going! Aki strides out the door without another word, and Lee Mei follows her obediently. Um, I'm just gonna... Jupiter waves me off absentmindedly. Just go. Oh, thank you! Rejoin Aki and Lee Mei outside the biology building. Which way do they go? Um, I think this path is the shortest. Point to a narrow path that cuts across the campus to the clock tower. Wordlessly, Aki takes off at a flat-out run, feet pounding against the concrete. 
Mei falls without question. Her steps are smaller than Aki's, but she seems to float effortlessly above the ground. I chase after the two girls, but it becomes increasingly difficult to keep up with them. Then again, we have only known Naoki for weeks, so maybe we don't haven't known him long enough to understand his intuition connected with his perfect memory. Mimei glances over her shoulder and notices me struggling to keep up. She slows her pace a bit, holding a spot somewhere between Aki and me. How it is pounding harder and harder, since when was running this difficult? Aki disappears over a hill, and I find myself gasping for breath as I slow to an uneven jog. My head is throbbing, too. What's wrong with me? As I drag my feet along the ground, I realize that Mei has stopped moving. Uh-oh. She stands at the top of the hill, clutching her stomach. Oh no. If she and I are both feeling this sick. We reach the top of the hill and we both stand in the shadow of the clock tower. What happened? It's death. Limei gives voice to what we both already know. My Kansei and hers are both churning in the presence of a dead body. Someone who died recently from the feel of it. Listen, if you want to stay out of here, I can tell Aki you're not feeling well. She shakes her head. I will go. I take a deep breath and steal my nerves. Then let's go together. She nods and we approach the tower. As we enter the tower, I feel another wave of nausea wash over me. I look around the small room, but there's nothing there. The sound of voices float down from above us. It must be upstairs. Li Mei and I both look at each other and nod. Two of us laboriously climb the wooden stairs up to the top of the bell tower. With each step, I find it harder to breathe. I can't remember being this tired before. Whatever this death was, it must have been brutal to leave such a strong emotional imprint. I reach the top of the staircase and freeze. Better not have been Naoki. My mind screams out, telling me to turn around, to look away. But I don't move. Behind me, I hear Li Mei catch her breath. In the far corner of the room, Naoki sits curled in a trembling ball. His face is stained with tears. Haki is kneeling next to him, holding him close and whispering words of comfort in his ear. At the other end of the room lies the remains of a mangled corpse, crushed by the weight of the university's giant copper bell. Oh, Jesus. The mouth of the bell has nearly removed his torso. The body hangs precariously over the edge of the tower. The edge of the bell is still dripping with blood. Splatters of crimson trail down the tower walls. Aaron paces back and forth, speaking a jumble of frantic words into a phone. No, I, I, I don't, I don't know. A voice at the other end of the phone tries to calm him down, but he grows increasingly agitated. No, 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 no! You, you don't get it. It's Doctor Johansson. Oh shit! My stomach threatens to abandon me entirely, and I'm suddenly glad that I didn't eat any lunch yet. Doctor Johansson. The only man who had answers now lies in front of me, short and nearly in two. Khan. Huh? Aki's voice snaps me out of my daze. She's staring directly at me. Now Aki lies in her arms. His body is shivering and his eyes are shut tight. You need to go. Your Kansei is going to overpower you if you stay any longer. I nod and turn away. She's right. I sit on the top of the step of the staircase and breathe slowly, trying to get my bearings. Li Mei sits beside me. She looks sad and terrified and very, very confused. Are you okay? She starts and blinks a few times, as if I've surprised her. Uh, are you okay? She pauses to think carefully about her answer and sort out her emotions from ours. No. No, I am not okay. Understandable. Let's get out of here. Yeah, me neither. We both start to stare down the long staircase of steps that we so painstakingly ascended. Neither of us want to turn back and face the grotesque body. Finally, Li Mei takes a deep breath and stands. We need to leave. Yes. The longer we stay here, the worse it's going to be. Make our way down the staircase carefully. With every step, I can feel the weight of the dead lifting slightly. At the bottom, I pause for a moment to catch my breath. I still hear voices echoing through the stone tower. Aaron sounds even more frantic than before. Something warm splashes against my cheek. Oh, that's blood. Oh, I suddenly feel sick again. Reach up and touch my cheek. Look at my hand. My fingers are stained with blood. That look of terror on his face. That is painful. No. No, please. I didn't touch the body, but I've still come into contact with the deceased. Akansi is already creeping into my mind. 
bite my tongue, trying to force myself to stay conscious, but I can feel my knees buckling under me. Kongai! I don't want to relive this man's death. I don't... My struggles are useless. I can't hold back my Kansei anymore. The world goes black. I brace myself with the pounding that this man received, but it doesn't come. Instead, every part of my body screams with pain. I particularly tighten my jaw, and my jaw complies. Wait, since when was I able to control my actions during these visions? There's something wet in my throat. I try to cough it up. In the distance, I can hear the faint echo of someone coughing. Is that me? I hear frenzied voices. Who's talking? Oh, hello. Slowly, I turn my head and force my eyes open. Aki's kneeling on the ground in front of me, staring at me with horror. He instinctively turns Naoki's head away from me and rests his face in her shoulder. What? Aaron stands nearby, open-mouthed. His phone slips from his hand and lands on the stone floor with a dim clatter. I can hear it, but it sounds so distant. I turn my head slowly. Where's the body? I don't see it anywhere. As I look around the room, realization sinks in. I can't see it, because I am the corpse. Oh, fuck. Was he still alive when they got here? Oh, fuck. I try to speak, but my throat is filled with blood. Little more than the sound of choked bubbling escapes from my lips. Oh, Jesus. Aki looks like she's saying something, but my vision is starting to blur. Before I can do anything else, the world around me fades away. I see faces now. People I don't recognize. Voices I don't know. It's a weight on my chest. I'm sinking further and further, and the weight keeps pushing harder. Bright colors fill my vision, and my body feels like it's on fire. Everything feels like it's spinning faster and faster. I scream, but I don't hear anything. Finally, the world turns black. Body aches. So does my head. My eyes slowly and find myself back in the sleep study room. I take a moment to inspect it more carefully. It's modestly decorated, but the colors appear carefully selected to be as uninteresting as possible. I'm lying in a bed. The mattress is equally bland. Not terribly comfortable. Not terribly uncomfortable. All in all, I've never seen a room quite so... neutral. So, we meet again. Kongai. I turn my head to see Lee Mei sitting in a chair beside my bed. Uh, hey, what happened? You passed out. Aki leans against the wall at the far end of the room. Her arms are crossed and her expression remains casual. Don't say anymore. Someone might be listening. Her eyes briefly flick towards the mirror set into the wall. Right. If Jupiter and her team aren't observing me right now, that would be all kinds of creepy. I give Aki a small nod and turn my head to face the ceiling again. Where's, um, Kizaki? He's sleeping at the dorm. Is he okay? No. No, he isn't. He's overwhelmed and sick. I'm, I'm sorry for letting him go by himself and not taking his concerns seriously. I feel like I honestly need to apologize for that, because the poor, the poor guy, he saw something fucking awful. I'm sorry. Turn my head back and forth to inspect the bland room. So, what am I doing here? Resting. Aaron's in his bed, Kizaki's in the other one. We figured you'd like a proper place to rest other than the floor. Thanks. Aki allows a thin smile to crack across her face. Thank Li Mei. She's the one who did most of the heavy lifting. Whoa. She sounds terse. Is there something I'm missing? What are you talking about? I mean, are you mad at me or something? Aki's expression tightens. You let my brother go off on his own. You let him experience that horror. <sighs> I let him go? Since when was I his babysitter? In case you haven't noticed, he's a grown adult. He's not a child to be doted on. Uh-oh. We are going to clash. Li Mei glances at me, then at Aki. She looks worried. I'm well aware he's not a child, but I'm not sure you understand that. Eh? You're the one who dismissed his concerns! That 
I deserve your anger for. If you trusted his judgment, you wouldn't have sent him off on his own like that. At the time, I didn't think I was really free to go, even though... That doesn't change the fact that it was his choice to go. Kongai... You know what? I think you're angry because he went and did something without your precious permission. Oh no, we this is going badly. See how you treat him? You tell him where to go and what to say without any regard for what he wants. You just hate the fact that he made us made us a decision without your approval. This is not going to end well. Aki's eyes widen and she advances towards me. It's not going to end well in the slightest. You don't understand what it's like for him! You're right, I don't. Lime stands quickly and places herself between us. Stop. The first time I've seen her look so determined. You are both scared and confused, and you're mistaking it for anger. We only have each other. Please do not destroy what we have. Lime. Lime nods at Aki. Go see him. He needs you. The sigh, Aki steps back and shakes her head. You're right. She smiles sadly at Li Mei. I'm sorry for making this hard on you. She takes a moment to regain her composure before speaking again. We'll have to talk later, Khan, about what happened at the tower. Oh, right. Yeah. Aki nods and shuts the door softly behind her. Li Mei sits at the foot of my bed and stares at me with wide eyes. You're hurting. A little. I'm still not sure what happened. What? Li Mei's voice is so quiet, I almost missed what she said. What? I lean towards her and she lowers her head to meet mine. Kansai is strongest through touch. Contact with blood amplifies it. It is the purest and the strongest. She reaches out and places her hand on mine for a brief second before flinching. My head is still throbbing. It must hurt her, too, simply to touch me. It must hurt her too much simply to touch me. I'm... I'm sorry. No. She turns away from me. I can tell she wants to say more, but she's struggling to find the words. We sit in a tense silence for a minute, avoiding eye contact. Listen. Lime shakes her head. Please, just rest. She smiles and rests her hand gently on mine again. I will be near. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. This time, sleep comes easily. Gone are the bright lights and the weight on my chest. I feel like I can breathe again. I'm not sure how long I sleep, but by the time I wake up, my mind is a lot clearer. Whoa. Sit up slowly. My body feels stiff. Look around the room. Li Mei is in the chair beside me, sleeping. Even in sleep, she sits upright, hands folded neatly in her lap. Warm for the subtle motion of her breathing, mistake her for a work of art shaped by a master artisan. The lighting is still neutral. Can't tell if it's day or night. When I think about it, this room reminds me of that place. Lights were always the same, and the colors were always neutral. Ugh, now that brings back bad memories. Reach out and place my hand gently on Li Mei's. Her skin feels cold to the touch. Li Mei! Oh god, her eyes fly... She doesn't, she doesn't like surprises! Her eyes fly open, and in a single unbroken motion, she leaps to her feet and snatches up the pen on the table. She brandishes it at me like a small dagger. Whoa, 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 whoa! curl up on the bed and hold my hands up in self-defense. It's just me. <laughs> she looks surprised. I, I didn't mean to startle you. I just... thought you might be sick or something. Li Mei blinks a few times, as if she's just waking up for the first time. Looks down at the pen still clutched in her hand. Flushes a light pink. Is something wrong? She tosses the pen back on the table and averts her gaze. No. Uh, no I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I get the hint. Conversation over. How long was I out for? Points to the bedside table. 
Unsurprisingly, Team Science has refrained from leaving a clock in the room, but the phone that Aki gave me is sitting next to the lamp. Pick it up and look at the screen. It's 5 p.m. already? Wow, did I really sleep that long? Limei nods. Where are the others? Gone. Eh? Okay. I dial Aki's number. The phone only rings once before she answers. Khan, you're awake! Evidently. Where are you? Back at the dorms. Taking care of Kizaki right now. Kizaki? Hmm. Someone else must be with her if she's calling him that. I hear the faint sound of frenzied music in the background. Some sort of video game? Aaron's with you, isn't he? Got it in one. How are you feeling? My head just got bashed, within, bashed in with a giant bell. Too soon, Gongai. She laughs, but it's forced. Yeah, this day didn't turn out quite like we planned, huh? I'm sure it went well according to someone's plan. She's quiet for a moment. Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. Why don't you come back to the dorms and we can chat about it? Sounds good. I'm starving, though. Cafeteria's still open. Do you have your card? Check my pocket. Yeah. The two of you should get some food, then. Come back when you're done. Sounds good. Talk to you later. Later. I hang up and find to find, turn to find Lee Mei looking at me expectantly. Aki says we should go get something to eat. Okay. I really like Lee Mei, in case you didn't in case you couldn't tell. She's so good. I <laughs> she turns and walks toward the door. And she's like Weirdly of of the uh the naughty mystery gang. She's my favorite character out of them. Although I suppose she still has the most lingering mysteries of the three of them. It seems like there's more... Just the way Aki reacted. Seems like there's more to their Aki and Naoki's relationship. Two. Not in a weird way, just in terms of why she's so protective of him. I'm sure there's naturally a good reason for the way she reacted to Kangai. Even if it was a bit over the top. Not over the top. A bit overboard. That's a better way of saying it. Doesn't make it seem unnatural. Even if she was a bit overboard, there's got to be a good reason for it. And... Based on how long... Khan has known these two... It's a reasonable interpretation for him to make, too. And he also reacted a bit of... a bit overboard as well. Interesting. Conflict. Co conflict we has it. Alright. The hallway still lit up with a piercing light, but now that I know it's night outside, it feels a little colder. We walk slowly, carefully placing one foot in front of the next. I'm still feeling ill from whatever that was. Limei holds in her tracks and tilts her head to the side. What's wrong? She glances at the door to the main lab. Some sort of sound coming from inside. It sounds like someone talking. No, it's more panic than that. Is someone in trouble? Run to the door and throw it open. Whoa! Don't let it get away! Oh no! Lure of fur darts between my legs and into the hallway. Oh shit! Stakes were made. Before I can react, Lee May steps forward and scoops it up in both hands. It's a small white rabbit with shining red eyes. Lee May carries it back into the lab. Thank you so much. Jupiter runs forward and lifts the rabbit from Lee May's hands. She walks it back to a small cage, lowers the rabbit in, and shuts the door tightly. <sighs> Jupiter leans back against the cabinet and sighs. Crisis averted. Oh! Oh! Lee May tentatively approaches the cage. Her eyes are wide with curiosity. It's okay. You can look. Lee May nods, and I can see a faint smile on her face. Thank you. Oh. 
these things down until th until she and the rabbit are eye level with each other. The rabbit turns to her, and its nose twitches. Lima scrunches up her nose to mirror its actions. Looks like you've made a friend. Lima nods once and leans in even closer. Jupiter smiles. He looks a lot more relaxed than she did this morning. You look happy. Happy might be pushing it, but I'm definitely feeling better. Sometimes it's hard to keep a cool head when dealing with all the administration. Fair. Especially when the second in command slacks off all the time. Second in command? David, he's supposed to be in charge of inventory and making sure everything is where it belongs. She points at the rabbit. Like making sure all the rabbit's cages are locked properly. I see he takes his job very seriously. Indeed. So what's up with the rabbit, anyway? Are you giving it a super soldier serum? Gamma radiation? <laughs> Nothing so dramatic. Just examining the effects of some drugs on various organs. Well, that's concerning. Uh, oh, yeah. Curing cancer, huh? Jupiter rolls her eyes. Hardly. What's the phrase? Too many cooks in the kitchen? Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Um, too many cooks spoil the pot, I believe. Spoil the broth? Jupiter considers the phrase for a moment. Cancer isn't the only disease in the world, but it looks like it if you see what drug companies spend money on. Fair. So you're not in for the money? I have enough already. Really? That's a... interesting bit of information. You in college? This a... Do you think you work for the college, or are you in college? I have enough already. Jupiter brushes the question aside. So, um, how exactly do you examine the effects of these drugs anyway? Jupiter glances at me, stares at me sympathetically before glancing at Lee May. Lee May straightens up and faces her calmly. Do not worry on my account. This creature was born only to die for the sake of others. I understand. That's concerning. Oh! I stare at the floor and kick at it a few times. That killed the conversation pretty fast. So, um, what about earlier? Don't worry about it. You're not the prime suspect anymore. Yes! Success! What? You mean my name is cleared? Yes. I calculated the thief's height based on his surroundings and matched it to you. What? It's not that hard to figure out if I have a frame of reference. That man is about 10 centimeters taller than you. Oh, well, that's good, I think. Good for you, perhaps, but now I don't have any leads. Must be rough trying to take care of the lab, especially after what happened to Dr. Johansson. Her eyes darken. What are you talking about? Did something happen to him? The... Uh, <laughs> oh no. Sorry to spoil your mood, Jupiter. Hmm, are we gonna get a choice to tell her or not? Whoa, she doesn't know? I would have the police want to keep it under wraps, but she worked with him. Why didn't they tell her about it? What am I gonna do now? Uh... Hmm... Uh... <laughs> hmm. Uh, well, I just heard he was supposed to arrive today, and he didn't. It happens. His schedule is always changing, so we've learned to expect surprises. She laughs. <laughs> I guess if you expect a surprise, it's not really a surprise anymore. I, I, I can't bear to hurt kill your mood even more after what we put you through this morning. I tried to laugh with her, but my stomach is starting to knot up. I feel really guilty for lying to her like this, but if the police don't want her to know, there must be a reason for it. Anyway, I hate to push you guys out, but I really have a lot of work I need to do. Feels like she might need to know, though, for going to solve places. Sure, no problem. Right now, any excuse to go would be a good one. 
I don't think I can lie to her much longer. Thanks. Lee may cast a final longing glance at the rabbit before following me out of the lab. I hurry across the campus and enter the cafeteria. It's mostly empty right now. I guess dinner rush doesn't happen until later. I know that most students are avoiding this place. Ha. Huh. But it stills a lot of confidence in me. Lee May and I each grab a tray and pick out food for ourselves from the buffet. I ignore the first few trays loaded with greasy hamburger patties and opt for a bowl of tomato soup with a heap of fruit on the side. Eat smart. From the color, I'm not sure how long the food's been sitting out, but I don't get the luxury of being picky. Lee May follows me closely, choosing to sample a small piece of everything. Adventure, I like it. She arranges the bite-sized pieces of food and even rows on her plate. We offer up our cards at the, le at the register and a bored-looking student swipes them both without bothering to check for ID. It's probably better that way. The ID that Aki supplied me with the other day feels like a lead weight in my pocket. She guaranteed it was government issued for my special situation, but I don't want to take any chances if I don't have to. Evening, you two. Oh, hi. You're here, too. Hello. Glad to see you're sampling the local fare. Sean observes Lee May's plate. Smart girl. Trying everything at once. Wish I had thought of that. <laughs> hey, sugar bunny. Oh no, are you two dating? Oh god. Oh no. Oh god. Chance bounces up to her, up to us and wraps her arms around Sean. Sorry I'm late. Chance turns and plants a dainty kiss on Sean's lips. Um... Are you interrupting something? Kongai, this is my girlfriend, Chance. We've met. I choked back my surprise. Oh, uh, that's cool. Sean looks at me, puzzled. Do you guys know each other? Kangai was at the shop last week when that terrible murder happened. <laughs> okay, that is our man. Man, that's rough. That is our name. That is that is the name we supplied. So, you you could say that. And everyone at the lab was harassing him today. They mistook him for a thief. Yikes, dude. If I had been there, I would have cleared everything up as quickly as I could. Appreciate the sentiment, but probably wouldn't have helped. It's fine. The misunderstanding's been cleared up. Oh, boss. I just hope this doesn't reflect badly on the school. Chance nods enthousi enthusiastically. It would be great if you came here. They both stare at me expectantly, white smiles on their faces. I feel like I'm in a used car a lot. <laughs> they, they do give off those vibes, don't they? Um, this school is neat. Neat? Yeah, that sounds convincing. Attempt was made. Lee May tugs my shirt urgently. I think we should get going. We're both pretty hungry. We won't keep you. Thanks. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Sean and Chance leave the cafeteria, arms entwined. The happy couple of used car salesmen. As soon as the door shuts, Lee May turns to me. She looks worried. What's wrong? That girl was there before. There? Where? Before? Where? At the coffee shop. She was there. Oh, yeah. Kind of a weird coincidence, huh? Something in the back of my mind tells me it's not just a coincidence. In fact... Hang on. Lee May freezes mid-step. At the lab, she called me Kanga. Shouldn't have known my name. Lee May's expression suddenly turns cold, and I instinctively brace myself. She's a liar. <laughs> Lee May strides toward the cafeteria door with strict, calculated steps. Lee May know. No killing. I will speak with her. Lee May know. Lee May know. Down, girl. Hang on, what are you planning? No response. Put that fork down, Lee May. Wait! I grab for her wrist, but she spins around and slaps her hand from mine. Oh no. You can't just go in there and confront her about it. You're right, okay? Chance, well, she lied to us. Lee May's gaze is blank. She refuses to move. We don't have any proof. She could just say she heard my name somewhere around here. We have to find a way to catch her. Recognition slowly flicks back, flickers back into Lee May's eyes. <laughs> Kongai. 
exhale slowly. I didn't even realize I was holding my breath. It's okay. We'll figure this out together. We'll find a way to catch her. For now, let's just eat, okay? Li Mei nods. Yes. I scanned the cafeteria for a place to sit. <laughs> Li Mei, please, don't go... Don't go... Uh... <laughs> I feel like you just came close to going full, uh, that scene from Jojo Part 4 <laughs> with the... With Koichi in his stand. And, okay, Master, let's kill the hoe. Itch! In one corner, David and Nathan share a table. I... I sit in the exact opposite corner of the room. I alternate between a huge pile of cheese-covered flies and the disordered... Fry... Cheese-covered flies? Cheese-covered fries and the disordered pile of papers that litter the table. It's like they're working on something. Let's join Nathan and David. We may not, we approach them slowly. They seem pretty engrossed in their work. Um, hey. We both look up at the same time. Hey! It's the Knot Thief! Uh, thanks? Not Knot Thief? Yeah, Jupe said she cleared your name. So instead of the Thief, you're the Knot Thief. Uh, thanks? Can we not use that nickname? Here I thought Aki had terrible naming sense. My name's Kangai. This is Lee Mei. That works too. Yes, yes, very good. Thank you. Wanna join us? If it's okay. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? Two of them hastily shove their fries and papers to one end of the table. Lee Mei slides into a seat, and I sit across from her. Um, aren't you getting your papers dirty? I point at the pile of paper sharing the table space with the cheese covered fries. That's just how college goes, dude. Eh, it's no big. The students Dump. won't notice. Oh, okay, those are student papers. Okay, maybe you should use a little little bit more discretion then. Students? We're grading papers. You mean those belong to students? David shoves a handful of cheese fries into his mouth. Yeah, gotta turn them back tomorrow. Grades are due soon. I try not to look skeptical, but Nathan doesn't miss the expression on my face. Don't worry, we'll be careful. I'm sure. As I watch them sort out papers, it looks like Nathan's the only one actually being careful. David's pile of papers is peppered with grease stains and bits of cheese sauce. I feel bad for his students. So, where are Ian's from? Oh, well, I was born in Edgewater. Cool, me too. Go Soundlings! A what now? Yeah, go Soundlings. I have hardly pumped my fist. Is that a sports team I should know? And where are you from, Lee Mei? China. David perks up. Oh, Aaron's from China too, I think. Uh, really? Yeah, he's Thai, isn't he? Uh, uh um, we're not going to touch that Thailand. one. Yes, yeah, thank you, Nathan. Oh, I thought it meant Taiwan. Hmm. At least an actual, an actual somewhat feasible mistake, but you're still a dumbass. Taiwan and China are... Never mind, it's complicated. Yeah, Ty <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, point was, I was wondering if you guys knew each other. Hmm? Do you have any idea how big China is? I was kidding, man. Mm. That conversation fizzled out quickly. Are you both planning to get into biology in college, then? And Nathan saves the day before uncomfortable silence can take hold. We've had more than enough of that today. Lee Mei nods. Nathan turns to look at me expectantly. Oh, um, I guess so. Well, you must be considering it pretty seriously if you're here. Yeah, you could say that. Do you have any questions about the program? Hmm. Yeah, what's it like working with Dr. Johansson? I mean, what's his research about? You won't be seeing him unless you're a grad student. Oh? He doesn't even lecture anymore. We run all his classes. Oh, so you're TAs? Is he with his work then? What exactly does he do? Lots of junk. Mostly modern medicine. Ways to heal the body faster. Or grow organs based on your own tissue. Oh. Uh -huh. Isn't that what Mr. Alton was working on before he died? It's at Lee May. She's looking back at me. A silent nod passes between us. 
She's thinking the same thing. Again, Nathan notices our expressions. Is something wrong? Um, I seem to recall Alton Engineering working on something similar. Yeah, Alton's an alumnus of U of E. He used to work under Johansson until he left to start up his own company. Ah. Do either of you know why he left? David and Nathan exchange uncomfortable glances. Well, you didn't hear it from us, but Aten and his partner Shen Guan were part of some super hush-hush project. The government was funding the whole thing, but something bad happened. And by something bad, we mean someone died. It's not official, but that's the only reason they'd shut it down so suddenly. Both Aten and Guan were booted from the university. I guess they were the scapegoats. Hmm. Aten started his own company and Shen Guan disappeared. Maybe they actually... Hmm. Nathan lowers his voice. I heard that he moved to China where he could continue his research. Fair enough. He glances sideways at David. Maybe we should ask Aaron if he's seen him. <laughs> ha ha. Do you know anything about the old project? Like what it was about? You'd have to ask Jupe for the details. Huh. Yeah, she's the only one who's seen the old project files. Oh. Well, her and Johansson, but he doesn't seem to be around right now. Well, that's concerning. One of those two are one of those two are now dead. My expression freezes, and I nod. Clearly, I'm not supposed to be talking about Doctor Johansson's death yet. David shrugs and pokes a fry without much enthusiasm. It's basically Jupe's lab these days. Hey, at least you named you second in command. <laughs> David rolls his eyes. Yeah, like that means anything. She's still in charge. And? If you don't want it, I'll take it. Nathan laughs and gives David a teasing punch in the shoulder. He may tenses up and suddenly seems very interested in her, in her last few bites of food. Hmm, there's some emotions there that she, that she doesn't like. Anyway, kiddos, we've got to finish this before morning recitations. Motions to the stack of papers on the table. We won't keep you any longer. Thanks for talking with us. Anytime. Lee May stands, offers a quick bow, and the two of us leave David and Nathan behind to finish their grading. As soon as Lee May and I exit the building, she stops and sighs. Isn't it nighttime? What's wrong? I notice you didn't like something they said. She nods and takes a small breath. There's fear and frustration, but they're too close. I cannot tell which is which. So they're not as happy here as they claim. Lee May nods. I laugh derisively. In the end, no one is. Two of us take our time walking back to the dorms. He may remain silent, but I can tell she's thinking about something. What's on your mind? Is it real? Is what real? Being built from man-made things. Eh? You're talking about Alton's work? Growing organs? She nods. I don't see why, it's, why it wouldn't be. It's not the body that makes you a person. It's... You. I'm not sure if I can explain it, but people aren't fashioned in a lab. Not the part that matters, at least. So yeah, I think it's real. She takes in my words silently and spreads the rest of our walk deep in thought. Aki is waiting for us when we arrive at the dorms. Glad you can make it back. Uh, yeah. We briefly make eye contact, but I still feel bad about our argument earlier today. How's Naoki? He'll live. He's resting in the room right now. Aki kneels in front of Li Mei. Are you okay? Li Mei nods weakly. I am well. Don't it's been lie. It's been a day. She touches Li Mei and the young girl's body visibly relaxes. You're not alone. Stop behaving as if you are. Aki takes both of Li Mei's hands in hers. Do you want me to sit with you? Li Mei looks surprised. Anaki. You were both there. You both need a break. Do you want me to sit with you? Please. Oh. Aki turns to me. I'm going to stay with Li Mei until she goes to sleep. After that, we need to talk. Oh, um, okay. Uh. Sure, I'll wait. I'll wait here. Uh, do we give you privacy, or do we give Naoki privacy? 
Uh, I'll be in my room then? Aki nods, and she guides Li Mei down the hall to their room. Oh, okay. You know what? We'll do this. Sure, I'll wait here. They're going to their room, so I'll just sit here. Aki takes Li Mei's hand and leads her to their room. I throw myself on the couch and groan. Body aches and my head is pounding. I haven't felt this bad since that day. That day again. Why do I keep thinking about it? Why did I even come back to Edgewater? Was it guilt? I close my eyes and exhale slowly, but my muscles are still, my muscles are still tense. I carefully review the events of the day, trying to place them all in order. Motions won't stop churning inside of me. Maybe that's dinner. You okay? I open my eyes slowly to see Aki, Aki sitting next to me. Been better. Where's Lee May? Sleeping, finally. It took a while to calm her down. Calm her? When people around her experience extreme emotions, it starts to overwhelm her. If it gets to be too much, she starts reverting. Reverting? Forgetting herself. Ah. But when I project thoughts, I do it selectively. When I touch her, I clear away everyone else's emotions and project only her own. Ah. When you do it, doesn't that mean you feel everything she feels? It hardly matters. You matter in this too. You're doing a lot for both of the both Naoki and Li Mei. She scratches her cheek and glances away from me. Guess we never stop to consider how much you care about them both and look after them, in turn. So, you wanted to talk? Yeah. About what happened earlier? I'm sorry. As am I. I've been expecting you to know everything about us, but I haven't been completely open with you. Understandable. She takes a deep breath and releases it slowly. So, it's open season. Ask what you want, and I'll answer you honestly. Hint of a smirk plays on her lips. Within reason. Right. Okay. Why don't you like Naoki looking at crime scenes? You said I didn't understand. She nods once. Khan, what's the worst moment of your life? Do you remember it? Ah. Perfect memory. If he has perfect memory of something absolutely traumatic... Of course I do. I lost the person I care about the most. How clearly do you remember it? I still remember everything that happened, but I guess it doesn't hurt like it used to. It's been a while. Naoki's Kansei is a double-edged sword. It's not just that he has a perfect memory. It's more like he stores up all of his experiences. If he reads a book, he doesn't just memorize the words. He actually memorizes what it feels like to read the book. That includes the temperature of the room he was in, or how he felt when he read it. When he recalls the memory perfectly, it also includes the emotions that he felt when that memory was experienced. So what happened today? It's not just the imagery. He'll actually remember what it's like to be in that moment, as if he never left. <laughs> Perfectly encapsulated trauma. I'm s that's horrifying. I'm so sorry, Naoki. Most people heal with time. But with him... Lowers her head and buries her face in her hands. I can't let that happen anymore. It's happened before? Anymore? For a moment, Aki's body tenses up. Finally re She finally relaxes with a rueful chuckle. I did promise open season sits up and clasps her hands in her lap. Our mother died during childbirth. All the doctors ever said was that there were complications. Uh? It hit our father pretty hard. At first he tried to be a good dad and raise us alone, but I guess the stress got to him. He started drinking, and then... Oh no, I don't like where this is going at all. He stares at her hands. Well, I guess somewhere in his heart he blamed us for her death. On bad days, he'd hurt Naoki. Oh, Jesus. After a while, all of his days were bad days. Wonder. That's when I first noticed Naoki's Kansei. He'd wake up in the middle of the night, screaming in pain. He remembered every detail, every strike, as if it was still happening. Jesus. I don't know when my Kansei appeared, but as soon as I figured out what I could do, I started trying to control it. You can master your Kansei if you work at it. I couldn't force him to stop. But I learned how to redirect his anger. Redirect it? To who? I don't like the answer to this question either. Oh. 
Oh. Aki says nothing, but she instinctively clutches her arms against her chest. I, I'm sorry. Eventually, one of our teachers noticed and called Child Protective Services. I thought that was our escape, but they wouldn't let us stay together, so... Her gaze turns to the room where Naoki lies. So you ran away? Yes. Jesus. Answers at me out of the corner of her eye. I don't suppose I have to tell you what it was like. I guess not. When I ran away, I was alone. Didn't have to look out for anyone else. By that same respect, you had no one to look out for you either. I didn't mind being alone. I'll pretend I believe that. <laughs> Thanks. Lucky leans back against the couch and stares at the ceiling. Anything else on your mind? What happened to me? I think, mean, I think I was in Dr. Johansson's body. Like, I don't know. Possessing it? Aki wrinkles her brow. She definitely looks troubled. Have you ever had a blood reaction before? I don't know. Kansai is made more powerful through physical contact. Blood contact amplifies that. Yeah, Lee may mention that, but I'm not sure what she meant. When you relive someone's dying moment, you're basically already inside their head. So it makes sense that a blood reaction would put you inside their body entirely. I shudder. Well, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, blood reactions tend to be fairly overwhelming. Honestly, I'm surprised you've never had one before. Well, I can't say with my ex my experience with my Kansei has been very thorough. I do my best to avoid anything dead if I can help it. Well, you've done a really poor job of that this past week. You're not wrong. Yeah, I've noticed. Aki frowns and stares at the ceiling. You might not want to hear this. Open season, right? She looks at me sadly. Whatever's going on, it's about you. I was afraid of that. Miko hasn't told us anything about you, but I know he knows more than you've shared. And the fact that he's here proves this is a special case. What do you mean? We're not supposed to notice, but he's not really a proper member of the police force here. He was assigned to catch us, and all he ever really does now is make sure we don't get in trouble. She grins. Or cause any. <laughs> He's a detective, but he doesn't have a partner? A detective shouldn't have even come in response to Jupiter's call today. So he came because it was about me? I don't think he was expected to see me, though. Well, if he didn't come for you, he came because there's something important here he has to watch over. Hmm. He did mention... Uh... He did mention, though, in Kansei, how he stumbled upon seemingly the information, the records of this pro- that- that one project. And that led to him being essentially assigned as the twin's caretaker. I nearly said gatekeeper, but you know what? That's a apt description of, uh, Detective Gursky. In relation to the Aki and Naoki. Their gatekeeper? <laughs> That's fair. <sighs> yeah, this is def this definitely went on for longer. But uh Yeah, uh I hate to cut I hate to cut off in the middle of uh emotional discussion, but we will see you next time. Until next time, until then. We're getting into it now. We are getting into it now, for sure. <laughs>